We're at the RV Museum in Elkhart, Indiana. If you have any interest at all in RVs, you will not want to miss this. Well, this is pretty exciting. This is a 1913 Earl, and the Earl is Harley Earl, who uh, ended up being the designer at General Motors for a couple of decades, 1938 to 1958. He custom built this trailer for a Caltech professor. It's being pulled by a Model T, probably the same vintage, 1913. It's pretty cool. The placard said it's the oldest travel trailer in existence. Well, back in 1989, my very first camper was a truck camper. And this, back in 1916, is the very first truck camper ever. They actually called it a telescoping apartment, and it fit in the bed of a old truck. Model T. A Model T. <laughs> this was also built in 1916, and it is one of the early tent trailers. Today, if they were going to run an ad for this thing, it would say it sleeps six comfortably. You've got two here, two here, and one in each cot underneath. One of the interesting things that I noticed about it is it has, this one has buggy wheels on it, uh, not pneumatic, just the wooden spoke with the rubber strip around them and I don't imagine that they held up to, on rutted roads too well, especially being pulled at, you know, a, a Model T could probably pull it at 25, 30 miles an hour. Um, so that would be pretty hard on those buggy wheels. I imagine they didn't last very long. Tent trailers would, I think, would have been very popular back in the day because they were relatively light. The cars didn't, I mean, the Model T had 20 horsepower, so it's not gonna pull a lot of weight. Their official name is the RV and Manufactured Housing Museum, but the Manufactured Housing Museum won't open until August of 2022. Stay tuned to learn why Manufactured Housing and RVs will be under the same roof. We're looking at a 1935 covered wagon travel trailer. This was a production trailer. They made like 30 a day and the covered wagon company actually was responsible for one out of six campers that were sold in the U.S. at that time. They called the covered plywood on the outside leatherette, whatever that means. This is a 1957 Cerro Scotty, and one of the interesting things that I found about it is that it's got a drop floor. So even though it's very low, low profile, you could stand up in it uh, working at the stove and kind of at the sink. Uh, you'd have to lean over to get to the sink, but the stove is right in line with the, the drop floor. If you're thinking about doing van life, this is the vehicle for you. It's a 1937 Hunt house car. There were several made, but how cool are these? However, if you're traveling with a friend, they will not be able to sit up with you in the front seat. It is a single driver, but what a cool, fun little van. There was a shift in the travel trailer industry. And in fact, it went back as far as 1939 with Schultz Trailer. They called this not a travel trailer, but a mobile home. Schultz is still in business and guess what? They're not making travel trailers, they're making mobile homes. Now we call them manufactured homes. So this happened with several companies where they actually came to an intersection and decided they were no longer gonna be building travel trailers, but were gonna be building manufactured housing. Depending on which sign you read, this is a 1954 or 1955 Spartan Imperial Mansion. This, although it looks like the long, long trailer, it reminds me of the long, long trailer from the movie. It actually was not. This was built by Spartan Aircraft Company owned by J. Paul Getty. And even though it is a travel trailer, you can definitely see that they're moving more towards the manufactured home industry. In fact, when the manufactured home museum opens, this will be on that part of it. Even back in the beginning, they stopped calling this a travel trailer, but called it a mobile home. It's very house-like inside, and you can see that this is one of the forerunners to the manufactured homes that are still being made today. So that big trailer required a pretty beefy truck to, to tow it, and that's actually what caught my eye as we were walking by, is this Studebaker truck. Uh, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Studebakers, as, as uh, some of you already know, and uh, so I had to come over and take a look at this. And, one of the things that I found interesting when I was reading this, well, the first thing is it says 1964 Studebaker mobile home toter. 
this is not a 1964. That front end was used up until 1948. And then in 49, the, the Studebaker got a completely different front end. But this front end, the latest year for this front end is 1948. The other thing that it was interesting, it talks about it being a uh, variable wheelbase that you could actually extend or retract the wheelbase. And I can't crawl under this thing to see exactly what's going on, but they say it's got a telescoping frame, but that leaves some big questions in my mind, knowing how cars operate uh, at, a, at, a, at a very mechanical level. Um, so you would have to have a telescoping drive shaft, you would have to have telescoping brake lines, and you would have to, the cable, the, a lot of times the emergency brakes are just cables. That would be the easiest thing to, uh, to modify uh, for, for that kind of use. But if you can figure this, this, this dilemma out, let me know in the comments. This is a 1958 Airstream and at 13 feet long, it is the shortest Airstream ever made. And in fact, this is one of a kind. They made just one of these. This is the Fleetwood 1985 Bounder, which is the very first Class A with basement storage. That just opened up a whole new world for RVers. I mean, we could not even imagine doing this life without having our outside storage. This is a 1967 Fan luxury liner, and Fan was actually the initials of the founder of the company, Franklin A. Newcomer. What's interesting about this trailer is 1967, and it has uh, torsion bar suspension, which is uh, used today and in, at least in travel trailers, kind of the more high end of travel trailers. The other thing I noticed about it is the wheels. These wheels, I, I, I don't know if they were purpose built for this trailer or not, but they're not like any wheel I've ever seen. It has a uh, four lug pattern and like I said, they're not like any wheel on any car or truck I've ever seen. So if you had to replace one of these wheels, you would be looking long and hard for one. This 1966 Mustang travel trailer is the very first one with a bunkhouse. Not only is it family friendly, bring the kids, but it also has a tiny bathroom and they became more in vogue in this era. I guess if you're gonna get mom to come along, you gotta have a bathroom. What a classic. This 1954 Yellowstone travel trailer was definitely on the higher end. This one used a real refrigerator and a real stove. These came like apartment quality, all that wood in there. They, wasn't, they weren't using any plastic. They weren't using any veneer. It was all solid wood. Wouldn't you love to have this? If you pulled up at a campground, you would be the most popular person there. I have no idea what they're talking about with this thing. <laughs> 